Hello everyone. There's so many things about being a gardener that I love. Being a gardener is, is so much more than just a hobby or, or something that you do. It's about what you become. It shapes the way you look at life. It changes how you see time. You, you have to always be looking at the next season. There are no instant results. You have to have patience and, and it forces you to relinquish the illusion of control. Being a gardener connects you to nature in ways that few things do today. And to a certain extent, that's where this Growing Gardeners YouTube channel has grown out of. I would love everyone to unplug from their screens and from their outrage and to become gardeners. The world needs more gardeners. Another thing I love about being connected to nature is that you start to notice the, the changes all around you. You start to see the little things, the, the birds and flowers that are, are telling you that it's about to start raining. Which plants and animals are warning you that the seasons are changing. That, the, that crisp green fresh foliage that tells you it's spring is about to arrive. And, and no matter how much of a gardener you think you are or you're not, we, we're all aware of those signs all around us. Think about the fact that here in South Africa, jacarandas are a sign that we need to start studying for the end of year exams. We all notice the extremely hot weather that usually precedes a cold front. But what about one of those signs that we've all noticed before, that moment just before it's about to start raining, when you can almost smell the earth opening up? Believe it or not, what you are smelling actually has a name. It's called petrichor. The word petrichor comes from two Greek words, petros meaning rock and ikor, which basically means the blood of the gods. And petrichor is basically a group of fragrant organic compounds that are produced by both plants and bacteria in the soil. These bacteria, or more specifically actinobacteria, are some of the most important and ubiquitous organisms on our planet and they are found everywhere that there is life. Or maybe a better way to say it is that there is life everywhere that these organisms exist. They are found in the soil, they are found in the air, they are found in salt water. These, these bacteria are responsible for breaking down all the decaying organic matter and turning them into nutrients so that plants will be able to use them. The specific bacteria that produces that smell that you can smell is actually something called Streptomyces. And Streptomyces is actually a source of a lot of natural antibiotics, which is great news considering we've so idiotically overused our antibiotics to the point where they no longer have an effect on us. But what makes the Streptomyces even more incredible is that for decades, scientists have wondered how trees seem to have this ability to be able to talk to each other. A, a tree's natural protection mechanism would kick in when an animal starts to eat its leaves, it would make its leaves go bitter. But within a few moments, a, a tree on the other side of the forest would also start to have its leaves go bitter. And biologists wondered how this was possible, how these trees were talking to each other. But what we've discovered is that there's this incredibly complex network of mycelium or streptomyces be living below the surface of the soil. And plants have this, this beautiful symbiotic relationship with them where they, they swap sugars and nutrients with each other. And not only that, they use this mycelium as a transport system to send nutrients between different trees and, and even sometimes between trees of different species, which is kind of like, to put it in our terms, it would be like us lending money interest-free to a neighbor that we don't even know. That's almost unheard of in us kind, intelligent human beings. There is so much we can learn from nature if we just stop and pay attention. But with outstripped masses, none of this would be possible. Entire ecosystems depend on this fungi-like bacteria living below the surface of the soil. But back to petrichor, the stone blood of the gods. Basically what you're smelling is that these bacteria, as they break down the organic matter in the soil, they release a chemical called geosmin. After sort of prolonged dry periods, the production of jasmine slows right, right down. But just before it starts to rain, the humidity increases and these bacteria can sense the humidity in the air and they just start producing jasmine in abundance. 
and as, as the first few drops of rain hit the soil, it splashes up and, and, and releases this jessamine up into the, into the air. And with the wind coming down, you, you can actually start to smell this. And the incredible thing is that our noses have the ability to smell one part per trillion of this jessamine in the air. So now you know that smell of rain coming is not just your imagination. It's called petrichor. And doesn't knowing all that just make you marvel at how complex and how intricate the world is that we live in and how little of it we actually understand. That's why I love being a gardener. And again, if you're enjoying these videos, you're getting something out of them, hit the subscribe button. We'll let you know as soon as a new video is up. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below and I'll see if we can answer them. In the meantime, happy gardening.